Hey, this is Bezinus. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how to reverse engineer a kick drum uh, using a reference track that you have or a reference uh, sample. Um, we're going to use uh, some basic techniques to shape the uh, amp envelope and pitch envelope uh, so it looks and sounds the same as your reference track. So if you haven't watched my previous tutorial on kick, I have uh, explained everything how a kick drum is made from scratch so um, you get the basics of what uh, these things in the kick uh, synth are. Uh, it's been a few years since I made that, it was like 3-4 years ago so I don't exactly know what's in it but I'm pretty sure I covered the basics of uh, pitch modulation and amp envelope and all those stuff. In this tutorial, I'm just going to focus on uh, showing you how to reverse engineer sound so it um, sounds as close as possible as we can get it to. So let's start by importing our sample. I have a sample here. So you can just drag and drop it in uh, any of these uh, click samples. And then I'm gonna disable everything here, like I don't want EQ, I don't want distortion, I don't want compression. I want to make sure the key tracking is disabled, so this button needs to be off on the sub control and on the uh, click as well. And then I'm going to mute everything except the sub control or the sub oscillator and make sure nothing is soloed. And the sub control uh, we set this to a sine wave, by default it's on a sine wave, but, on a sine wave. but if you have changed it, uh, let's put it back to sine. And set the pitch uh, here to 20k, uh, so we get the full uh, spectrum. And that's about it. And now we're going to go to the click view. Uh, disable the sub view, go to click view, and then we're going to set the length of the sample to match up to the sample i mean the length of our kick here and make sure uh we go back to the click here and uh, make sure there is no amp modulation on the click because they we don't want to change the original sound so i want to have that as a reference uh, going back to here I want to make sure I just want to make sure I'm not cutting any part of this wave cycle. So the wave cycle is going through here. I think it end, it ends here. So I want to match it to that without cutting anything. And you can hold a uh, command on a Mac to just find adjust it like that. Okay, so that's the sound that we want to make, and it looks like this. It sounds like this if I play it and now we're gonna do what we're gonna do we enable our sub view so sub view is our sample that we are making click is the one that we're referring to so the yellow one is what we are referring to and the blue one is what we are making so we want to match the blue waves to match exactly in terms of amplitude and uh, the amp envelope to match the yellow one. Uh, first, I'm gonna quickly explain something about wave waveforms. So when you have a sine wave, uh, from any peak to peak, you have a full cycle. From a positive peak to a negative peak, you have half a cycle. Uh, and we're gonna refer to these uh, as we are shaping the sound. So, uh, and as, as I start doing this, I will explain better. But for now, just know these are, this is one cycle, this is one cycle. This is also one cycle. This is also one cycle. Most of the kick drums are just a sine wave that is pitched over time. Uh, and I have explained this in the previous video, so I'm not gonna, into the, not gonna go into the details. But just know that uh, by doing a pitch uh, modulation, we are for shaping the uh, pitch of the kick over time. And 
what we can see here is that in the beginning the, the wave cycles are more dense they're closer to each other because it's higher frequencies more of them happen in the shorter time that's just uh, the definition of a frequency the number of cycles per second so this is milliseconds so per second we have a lot of these because let's say if you have a 20 if you have a 20k uh, frequency here it means that we have 20,000 cycles these small cycles per second um, so when you have a look at this waveform you, you know that in the beginning of it we have more cycles and in the end we have less cycles it means that is we are pitching down we are slowing the cycles and as you can see it gets further and further because we are getting to a lower to the lower frequencies until we get to the 20 hertz which is uh, towards the end of it so that's just a quick overview of how the kick uh, is made now when we make kicks we usually have uh, different points with different curves and I call these uh, little circles um, pointers I'm gonna just refer to them as pointers uh, I don't know what you call them but that's how I call them <laughs> um, so I'm gonna put like one two three four maybe five pointers in different places one in the middle in the beginning and towards the end because that's normally how the kick uh, kicks especially inside trance are made like the, this kind of form is very popular I mean in any genre it's like it starts from higher frequencies and that's where your click and attack are and then it uh, pitches down and then you get to the sub of the kick which is here so we have a waveform like this and I'm gonna now enable the sample that we have the view of the sample so i can match the amp envelope of the what we are working on to what we want to get to and i do that by just creating some pointers and then kind of i as i drag this i look at this uh, area i want to make this shape and that's quite easy to do that's the easiest part of doing this uh, reverse engineering because that you can visually see easily and then we get to the next part which is the hard part it's not that hard it just takes some practice before you can get it done quickly you know I, the first time I tried to do this it took me eight hours to uh, get this uh, sound that I was making as cool as possible to the sample that I was referring to and that was fun <laughs> by the end of it i was closing my eyes i was seeing these waveforms i'm not joking <laughs> but the next day i uh, tried to redo the same thing and see what i can do better and i came up with some techniques that i'm going to share with you and hopefully it's going to make it easier for you and you're going to make some solid sounding kicks so something like this do you see uh, this area we have created a problem it's a distortion because we haven't let the wave cycle to finish its cycle we have cut it short by this uh, so that creates distortion so just be mindful of these uh, as you are creating the amp envelope and they usually happen if you have like a if you have a uh, kind of like a uh, curve that is like going from from this point it's going like uh, vertically down all of a sudden it happens like that so you just want to make sure that your curves are nice and not creating a distortion okay that's um, close enough to let me see if I go closer here I think that's close enough so uh, I can just uh, come back later and fix this so that was the first portion out of the way actually that was the second portion after the out of the way the first portion was to set the length to the length of the sample which we did and then the amp envelope number two we get it as close as possible as we can uh, it doesn't have to be exactly the same right now because 
you're going to come back back and forth until you get it perfect. But I just don't want to have to compare too many things. Compare the amp envelope and compare, compare the pitch envelope. It gets confusing. So we get that done. And now it's time to get the hard part of this done. Now, there is a... Usually when you create a kick drum, you have these nice curves and uh, you don't have so many different pointers like this and this and this and this. But uh, when you are trying to reverse engineer sound, you may need to create so many different pointers because initially you don't know what kind of uh, curves you are after. And by creating so many different pointers, you can lock a certain po point in time. For example, if I do this, uh, I created uh, this um, this pointer between these two and I go all the way to the left close to this one and then I go all the way up to create a high density uh, here and then I can see exactly what this point uh, is on the waveform so when, when I'm changing something here the start of this change happens from here uh, just be aware of that as we're working through so as we are um, trying to get these cycles to match exactly in terms of wavelength and the number of cycles uh, this is going to come handy to lock some place in uh, lock some place in time so you don't change anything after that another thing to mention before i start actually we will wait until we reach the end maybe it's not needed right now uh, i usually start from uh, going from left to right I, I try to get as close as possible on the left side of the spectrum and then i move my way my way towards the end of it and by the time i've done this this part and if it's i've done this right this is just a minor adjustment and it can be really easy to do so we need to zoom all the way in 5000 percent is the, as zoomed in as you can get and you can see here that we have these two cycles happening. Remember, peak to peak. Uh, one thing that might confuse you if, you, if you're if you seeing that this peak and the next peak is lower than this, that's just the amplitude. What we are looking for when we are working with the pitch envelope is actually in the frequency and the curve of the uh, frequency change. So uh, right now I'm looking at here, I want to have one of these blue ones matching to this and then the second one has to be the same equal distance between the blue ones as they are between the yellow ones, if that makes sense. And that means that we're going to have the same frequency in this time, point in time. And um, one other thing I need to mention before we get further down. Uh, getting this part of the kick uh, usually is the hardest part um, because first of all there might be some portions of this that is like faded in and we don't see how many cycles happened here so I don't know if there was any cycle before this or no but um, I'm not going to focus on the first two cycles usually and when I get to the end of it I come back and I edit um, but I just want to get from this point onwards to match exactly and I want to set a pointer that is exactly matching to this so I can edit afterwards. I do that by again doing the same thing. I put two pointers and I create this third one and I pitch it up or down and I see where is it locked in place. So when I do this I can see that the wave is coming from here so this point is here. So I'm gonna get this to match right there and then I kind of cre create a curve up and that I think is close enough in terms of these two it's not exactly but I'm not going to worry about this right now these two are very close to each other and then we, we keep looking at the peak to peaks actually the positive peak to the negative peaks and make sure that they are lining up so in this case this one and this one this one they are lining up it means that we are in the same frequency and we don't need to worry about worry about it and then looking from here to here I can see that we have we are drifting behind meaning that our wave is um, the blue wave which is uh, what we are making is getting slower compared to this one so we need to find this point and speed it up now you can go 
here and create these pointers and find exact points and match them and do one by one but um, that's not usually how the kick is made you need to find the right curve between two points and um, in the beginning when you're creating this uh, it might be easier to create as many pointers as you need to to get close to the shape and then when you zoom out you actually see a, a shape happening and then you can remove the pointers and then just like curve it up or down to get the shape uh, what I mean if I zoom out right now and see if you have too many pointers here then it's going to become so confusing so try to undo this without having so many different pointers so I want to see if I can now that I've locked this in place um, I want to see if I can actually I haven't locked that in place I think we need to go further zoom out zoom out um, maybe I think it is here I want to lock this place, this in place to a pointer. And yeah, so it's about there. And now we have this. So I'm going to do a curve and see. So this this locked to this area. I want to see if I can get a curve going here that is going to bring everything together. And yes, we can up to here. And now I'm going to find another. We, we drifted here apart a little this is coming too too soon but I'm not gonna worry about it too much again because um, I'm after to after creating a similar sound uh, similar enough to sound that is sounding good but not exactly the same so um, I'm not gonna obsess about this but if you really want to make the exact same sound as close as possible these are the things you need to be mindful of positive peak to negative peak you need to make them match in terms of distance and uh, so I'm going to zoom out and I need to create a pointer here so I can uh, drag everything back in again. So let's find that curve. Uh, one thing I want to mention here <laughs> to make your life easy. Wherever you think you are going to have a pointer that correlates to this, just go a lot further further to the right. They're usually a lot further to the right than what you think. So I think this is going to be here, but I'm going to go here. <laughs> Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, so see, this is the... This is the area that I need to lock, and actually it's, I think, further than this. It's here. Yeah, so I'm doing this, and I'm looking at here to see where in uh, here we are um, pulling the wave in from. It's here. And so this is the point I need to create. So this, I'm going to create this, get rid of this, uh, maybe pull this back in a little. And then from here, I'm going to see if I can make this match to the other one by just creating a curve here. And we are getting close. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Then I'm going to create another pointer. And this time I want to have the pointer. Want to have the pointer where? I want to have the pointer around here so I can pull this back in. Okay, zooming out. Zooming out all the way. And we got to this point. This was here. So I think somewhere along here. Let me see. Okay, this, this is, this is the good point, so, do this, curve down, no, we need to curve back up, still looking at this area here, and now we need to pull this back in, actually I need to create another one here, then pull this out, so these two become equal distance, so it means we had a curve here, so, we're gonna go down around here. I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm gonna see if I can get rid of this one as well and see if there is a curve that I could create like so. Okay, um, not too bad. I'm gonna zoom out again. As we are getting closer to the right side, it's going to get easier and easier. As, and as, as I was saying in the beginning, when you create these uh, many points, at the end you can now see the curve 
what so this is the curve that we're going to end up with uh, at the end when I'm going to remove all these pointers uh, actually now I'm going to work a little on the right side to get it a little closer move this uh, further away see okay where were we we were I need to stay focused <laughs> I need to find this point again and then lock it in and then pull things back in so let's see where that, that point is it is around here so so that was the point we already found, found that actually so we need to create a curve up no this needs to go up yeah this needs to come down this needs to go up and now you see the curve so we get rid of this and we actually create this um now i'm gonna bring that back in because these are locked in place uh, any anywhere before this is locked in place so i don't want to mess with that right now go down I didn't really want to fast forward it's, uh, so normally I would when I make these tutorials I fast forward to the like when I explain the concept I fast forward to the end uh, so you guys don't sit and watch this but I think it's important part of process to see what the challenges are and how I go about resolving these uh, challenges so I can come up with the waveform that I'm after and so here now from here to here we are deviating so from here i have my waveform is getting it's going too fast it's coming uh, this peak to this peak uh, happens faster than the reference track which means we need to slow it down we need to find this point somewhere here and then curve it to the right which means we are slowing it down so i'm gonna put a pointer here another pointer here and like that and then i'm gonna see if i can create a curve these are matching up ish now we need to pull this back in probably bring this up just a tad like this and then probably i'm gonna put a pointer here and then zoom this i mean bring this in like that, create another pointer like that and it's not in the right place here when I when I find the pointer and I then I, I want to move it around I try to move on the curve because I have already f found the proper curve up to this point so I don't want to mess that up here I need to put a curve here and like so then curve this up something like that i think these uh we, need, we have a problem here and this maybe the thing is that the end of this is uh faded out so i actually don't see what's happening here let's flip the phase so we can see this better so this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Actually, we are okay. We are okay. Uh, what we have problem is the amplitude. So we go to the he end here. We fix this amplitude envelope. As I said in the beginning, we go back and forth a few times without creating distortion as much as possible. Uh, probably need a to fade it out quicker like that um, something like that okay this is uh close uh, not exactly but we need to fix this peak here because uh, that is a frequency that is uh more prominent in our sample right now than the original sample so i need to fix uh find where it is and fix it this is okay see this this part of the um, the positive side of this uh, cycle is here but the negative side we need to trim down so it's probably in this curve 
and say if I go too much it's creating that distortion so we need to be careful mm. I probably need to get rid of this bring this more to the left get rid of this curve getting closer okay that is close um now we fix this portion like that probably can i do a curve here mm. no it was better with a pointer in the between this is probably a curve yeah this is probably a curve here is it this just a curve is this just like this and then like so yeah i think it is getting this right is important if you want them to sound similar especially in terms of how punchy it is and okay i think that's close enough uh, I mean, you can really tweak this too forever to get uh, the perfect sound, but I think I'm gonna be happy with this. Um, come on, there's a point here, I know it is, I can't find it. It's too much. There you go. I think that's um, very close. We haven't even listened to anything yet, but I'm sure it's going to sound similar. Uh, where we're going to have difference, actually, I'm going to show you, is this area. As you can see, um, our wave is a sinish wave, but here um, the other wave is bending to the right it means that it's slowed down somewhere around here so if you want to get this uh, sounding exactly the same you need to find this point and then slow it down let's have a listen to our sample just a sample and that's the sample we made that was the original sample a very close in sound very very close ours is a little louder so let's bring this down so they're they're not fooled by it <laughs> okay now let's do a visual test i'm gonna pull up the spectrum analyzer and see if it did a good job in terms of um everything actually just make this smaller so we can see what you're doing here so uh, that's the sample we made this is the original sample if you look they are very similar and there is differences here we have a dip I need to find where this is it's uh, in the 320 Hertz so we have a dip uh, that's probably here yeah need to fix that but as you can see and you can hear it's very close and uh, the original sound is uh, has a little bit of a, a low pass on it we need to low pass that but other than that they're sounding pretty damn close man okay so let's see what we can do here if i get rid of this and now as i explained before if you set uh if you set the shape of something here towards from the this point to the right when you change something on the left you're not affecting any of the you're not not affecting the total uh, frequencies and the changes on the right what you're affecting is the phase of the initial uh starting point of the waveform therefore may, you may lose half a cycle at the end of it but um you can if you change something here it, it it might look like everything is now messed up but uh if 
if you keep the total number of cycles that is happening and let all the cycles finish properly, you can align them back in by just pulling these things in and out. And I think we went slow and fast here, and that's why we created that uh, uh, issue that I showed you. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this. And keeping track of what we did, I'm just going to pull this in. And I'm going to get rid of this point as well, and then just do this. Because usually what you have is just like a few points, and then it's uh, a curve that does the job. So let's have a look here. That is our sample. That's the original sample. We got even closer by fixing that area. So we can spend some time to actually fix all of these points and get really close to the original sound. Um, not gonna spend all that time. Maybe I should. <laughs> I'm gonna spend a little time to show you guys and this is gonna help be helpful. So uh, as I um, move something on the right, I adjust it at the, from the left as well. So if I slow this curve down, I will speed it up on the left side. So um, they everything lines up again. Let's get rid of this. I actually didn't need that. Add. Slow down. Um, can we get away with a curve here? We might not be able to get away with the curve here. I'm gonna try. Um, yeah, no. See, now, now we are drifting. We are actually messing up this shape. So let's get rid of that and go back where we were. How about here? Can we get rid of this? Yes, we can. How about this? Can I do this a curve? Certainly can. This. I do a curve. Somehow. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Because um, now we are... Actually, it's fine, I think, if I speed this up, ouch. Come on. My eyes are burning. <laughs> Been staring at the screens for too long. How about these here? Can we get rid of these? Oh, we have made some mess here. I don't know how, but... Yeah, oh, we, we created this curve and I didn't pay attention what it was changing. So, uh, undo, undo, undo. I didn't want these to be misaligned. And I did that by doing this because the starting point of this was here. And then I curved it up. I lined everything back in on the right side. But what I didn't pay attention is I had, it, I had created a mess on the left. Because the, this point is the anchor point of this. How about this? Can we get rid of this? Um, sure. Yes, maybe. How about here? Can we make this a curve? Need to zoom in. Zoom in. Curve this up. Actually, yeah, that is fine. How about this? That is fine too. And mm -hmm. what do we need to pull in here? This moving along the curve to find that point, moving along the curve to find the point that I want. I want to make this an anchor point so I can stretch it in. Okay, so that is one curve out of the way. I mean, one point out of the way. And here I need to speed this up, slow this down. Okay, I think that is good. Maybe I can get rid of this as well and create a what did I do? What did I do? This comes like this and it slows down. So I think this is going to be more of a flat line. That's going to do it. Um, 
maybe something like that. I mean, you don't have to do this, but if you have less curves to work with, no, no, see this, I'm messing up that, that point is needed. Um, the, the less curves that, uh, I mean, the less points that you have when you are now tweaking the sound to, to match it to your track or whatever, you change the form, the less of points you have here, it's going to be easier to work with, but this is fine. And let me get rid of the tags. This is totally fine. You can just leave it as is, and this is your sound. So it looks, uh, this is this curve here. Yeah, so we flattened that, and we're fine. Actually, that was a problem <laughs> there, I didn't realize. Okay, this is lining up. Yeah, so you can spend really some time to fix this and like get it close. But that was the whole lesson. Now, sometimes you... Uh, a few things I want to mention here before I sign off. Um, uh, Kicks, some of the kicks might have a distortion on it, and then you might see, um, when you look at this, you will see here some weird shapes. That might be a distortion, it might be they used a different um, uh, type of waveform for the uh, initial wave, so it might be a saw wave or something, it looked like this. But uh, but the concept stays the same. You need to match the peaks of these and the positive and negative peaks to match to the same cycle number and the same uh, frequency. Once you do that, you're going to have the same sound. Same, I mean, similar enough that you're going to be happy with. So uh, that's one thing I want to mention. And the other thing I want to mention is like, if don't spend too much time um, if it's not important for you on the... Uh, attack portion of this because a lot of the, the a lot of the times they uh, use a um, they use uh, different samples for the click part of the and uh, uh, kick and then um, that might be from a it, it might not be from this envelope it might be like some different it might be two three different samples and it's gonna be really hard to make it in the way I showed you and just skip through them um, that's not that important part of the kick um, because you can get those samples from like there's click library and this uh, Sonic Academy kick also has some uh, clicks uh, that you can use. Once you get this shape done and it's sounding similar to your uh, kick, you can play around with the clicks and put some hi hats on it. A lot of times they have a little of hi hat or a reverb, and those are the things that you you can visually see that something is going on, but you can't really match it with this. And you will you will see some like uh, wiggly lines here, or like um, let me see if I can pull in a bad sample that sounds horrible. <laughs> okay, let's put this in here, and let's hide this and let's view this. Um, if you look here, you will see these wiggly lines. These are this. This is typically a noise, which means there is a hi hat on top of this. You can create that uh, the kick of the kick portion of the sound without being distracted by these. If you zoom in the beginning here, you probably will see. So this is noise. This is noise. This means there is hi hat on it or reverb or something. And this might be different clicks. So that's what I'm talking about. Like if you're, if you have this kind of samples that you're trying to reverse engineer, don't stay, don't focus too much on these little details. Uh, you can add these later. This might be distortion um, here, this portion. Um, and there's distortion in kick as well. They can just use this and tweak it in until you hear something similar. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you found this to be useful, give it a thumbs up so other people can find it easily. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you get the new content as they come out. I'm working on a master class um, teaching music production techniques. Um, I'm gonna make a song from start to finish and walk you through in uh, Ableton um, how to make that track and how to mix it and making it sound really solid. So watch out for that. Um, that's gonna be a maybe 20 part episode. Um,
I haven't started recording it yet, but I am putting together a plan for it. Uh, if you're looking to learn something uh, specific, uh, let me know in the comments or reach out in other social medias. Let me know and I may add them to the content. Uh, until next time, stay safe.